Hello, this is Berhane Selassie, the Orthodox Catholic One here on YouTube, and today's video will be about St. John Chrysostom and his commentary on Matthew 125, which is the verse used by many Protestants to insist that Mary uh, had subsequent children after Jesus was born. Uh, the verse says, And when he had taken her, he knew her not, referring to Joseph, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. The word till there is eos u. And that's the verse that Protestants think is a smoking gun in the case of Jesus having brothers and sisters uh, by Mary. And that's not the case. That is not actually evidence. And here I have brought forth a 4th century witness who was fluent in Greek, made homilies in Greek. He was the Byzantine, the Greek patriarch of Constantinople, uh, one of the greatest uh, Bible commentators, uh, St. John Chrysostom. So, Stum, sorry. Um, he's revered in both the East and West, and uh, one of the great uh, patri uh, patriotics. Anyway, he goes on. Uh, I'll, I'll read the comedy a homily afterwards. Uh, but anyway, he created his homilies in the mid fourth century, mid to late fourth century, about uh, what I think I meant three hundred years uh, after the time the Gospel according to Matthew was penned. Uh, Saint John Chrysostom, like Saint Matthew, they were both fluent in Greek. Uh, pretty much the same language of Greek, because it's only 300 years apart. So it'd be like us understanding someone in the 1700s would say it's largely the same language, some differences. Uh, but it's a lot more reputable than listening to someone who just learned it in a seminary, didn't wasn't raised with it, and only uh, knows how to read it uh, in the 21st century today. But of course, people think they're more competent uh, than uh, people who were actually speaking and talking the language on a regular basis. Anyway, St. John did not believe the usage of until eos u in Matthew 1, verse 25, was proof that Mary and Joseph had sex. Uh, St. John used several examples of eos, or u, or eos uh, being used where an action does not actually cease but continues after the eos. In a few of his examples, uh, both eos and u are used. Now here is uh, St. John Chrysostom's homily. Uh, number five, based on the the Gospel of Matthew, verse one twenty-five, uh, commenting on Elsu, and he starts off, and when he had taken her, he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. He hath here used the word till, Elsu, not that thou shouldest suspect that afterwards he didn't he did know her but to inform thee that before the birth of the virgin was holy uh, the virgin was holy untouched by a man so its only point is that to say is that during that period of time before jesus was born that she was not touched it's not saying anything afterwards but anyway uh chrysostom goes on and says but why then it may be said hath he used the word till because it is usual inscription often to do this and to use this expression without reference to limited times. For so with respect to the ark, likewise it says the raven returned not till the earth was dried up, and yet it returned even after that time, and, and when the discourse and, and when discoursing also of God the scripture saith, From age to age age unto age uh, rather age until age, thou art not as fixing time fixing limits to this case in this case and again when it is preaching in its preaching the gospel beforehand and saying in his days shall thou flourish shall righteousness flourish and abundance of peace till the moon be taken away it does not set a limit to this fair part of creation so then here likewise it uses the word till to make certain that what was before the birth but as to what follows, it leaves thee to make the inference. <clears throat> Thus, what is necessary for thee to learn of him, this he himself hath said, that the virgin was untouched by, <clears throat> by man until the birth, but, what, but that which both was seen to be a consequence of the former statement, and was acknowledged, this in its turn he leaves for thee to receive, namely that even after this, she having uh, so become a mother, and having been counted worthy of a new sort of travail, 
and the childbearing a childbearing so strange could that righteous man ever have endured to know her so he's saying joseph would have never touched her uh, for if he had known her and kept her in in the in the place of a wife how is it that our lord commits her as unprotected as having no one to his disciples to his disciple and commanding her commanding him to take her uh, to his own home how then may one say are james and others called his brethren in the same kind of way joseph himself was suppo supposed to be to be husband of mary for many were the veils provided that the birth being such as it was might be for a time screened wherefore even john so called them saying for neither did his brethren believe him and he goes on you can see the greek text here i've provided a link it's an archive.org and uh, you could read the english translation off of here off of a website called documenta catholica omnia dot eu uh, but anyway let's look at the analyze the proofs that saint john chrysostom uses this first one is the raven returns not till the earth was dried up exit genesis 8 7 um well it seems that he was using a paraphrase based on some type of Septuagint he had that I don't have access to and I don't know if is in existence or maybe he was just going off in memory I don't know <laughs> but this quotation doesn't actually use Eos U the Septuagint version I ha have <clears throat> uh, the Septuagint I have only has uh, Eos and in any case St. John uses it in a sentence to show that it's possible to use it that way so if I mean if he thought it was possible to use it that way I don't think uh, he would be ignorant of his own language. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's look at his other one. Um, the other text he uses is Psalm 89, verse 2, and the Septuagint is Psalm 90, verse 2, in the Masoretic text uh, numbering in most English Bibles. And, and it says, From age until age thou art. And it, right here you can see the word eos is also being used. Unlike the first text in Exodus 8, 7, this is actually an exact quote that I can find in Septuagint at least. The psalm does not use Eos U, but simply Eos, showing that he felt it was sufficient to demonstrate that it, uh, that Eos had this meaning. Anyways, third text uh, is found in Psalm 71 verse 7 in Septuagint and Vulgate and Psalm 72 in most Bibles, especially in English. It says, In his day shall righteousness flourish and the abundance of peace tell Eos U, the moon be taken away, and you can see it right here. Eos U is being used, as I mentioned right up here. This text is also a verbatim quote of the Septuagint, at least that I know of. However, unlike the last two, this one actually contains the word phrase Eos U. Obviously, the psalmist did not intend to say that righteousness and peace would cease uh, once the, mom the moment, uh, once the moons go away, the moon goes away. So anyway, this is Saint Berhain Selassie. Uh, commenting on St. John Chrysostom, uh, who wrote, 1600 years ago, believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary, and was fluent in Greek. So, um, compare that with what a pastor says who studied, studied Greek in, for a few years in the seminary, um, and only re reads it, if that. Uh, I have friends in Greece, I had a friend in Greece, he would study like this old Greek, Koine Greek, and stuff like that, and he didn't even understand it. I mean, uh, so how do you expect, uh, like, a man who goes to a seminary for a few years to be proficient in the language? You don't. Anyway, this is Berhane Selassie, the Orthodox Catholic one.